wee bit far away. Doing a wee bit. For better. You got your glue. Okay, you you're going to put them over there. You won't need that until the last bit though. And we'll just see if you look up there on that corner, it says live. And when we see a face, that's when we know that it's working. So we'll just wait for a wee second. See if you can see anyone. Anybody watching? See if there's any eyes here. Tell me when it's working. No. It's still not working. Yep. There's an eye. There's an eye. So somebody's watching that just double checks that it's working. And Mummy likes to just double check that um, it's heard because a few days ago I didn't have the sound on it was very embarrassing. So I'll just double check this working. Maybe the people that are watching might just type something so that I just know it's working. Good morning everyone. Hello, nice to see you. Happy belated Easter. I hope you all had a lovely time. We have ate far too much chocolate, haven't we? Mm-hmm. Mummy's diet's not going very well, is it? No. No, Mummy's diet's not going very, very well at all. We've ate far too much chocolate. I'm going to have to go on a big diet after this. Me, not you, not you. Good morning, everyone. Happy belated Easter. I hope that you are all well and had a lovely Easter weekend and managed to get out and about and do the things that you normally would do. Um, today, we're going to do a really, really fast lesson today because I have got... Midden in the house with Alex upstairs hiding. She's got a stash full of snacks up there and her iPad and lots and lots of toys. So hopefully, fingers crossed, I can get through this without an interruption. Um, Mr C's gone away back to work, so I'm having to fly solo. If this doesn't work, I might end up filming it in the evening and not doing it live anymore. But um, yeah, so we're live today. We're doing a step by step collage field picture because every time I drive about just now I see all the lovely lambs in the fields so we're going to do it in a few little steps and um, hopefully you've got all your resources with you hopefully you've got some blue A4 paper or painted paper hopefully you've got some green A4 paper or painted paper and a smaller A5 piece as well. You don't have to have two colours of green. I just like it because it gives that sense of perspective. So these hills look like they're further in the distance with them being a different shade. But if you don't have two shades of green, it honestly will not matter. Um, and we're just going to do it step by step. As per usual, I will post this afterwards because I know that a lot of people can't join us in the morning and they can always take part. But please, could you please post photos once you've done it just so I can see the variations and see what you've done and see how you've gone with the lesson. Um, talk to me throughout it if you want. I'm not very good at multitasking. I always complain and moan about that um, and apologise for that. But I'll try my best to look at the bottom as well in between steps. I have got Harris with me today. He is going to try and take part in this. He's actually done this before as one of his homework tasks with Mrs. McDonald. So, well, for Mrs. McDonald. So he kind of knows what he's doing. So he'll be a bit of an expert, actually. In fact, I could probably go and have a cup of tea and you could just do it yourself. No? No. Okay. Right, let's get started before we get instructed from a minute. So we are going to start off with our A4 piece of sky paper. You got yours as well. So you're going to have a portrait. So that's up and down the way. And then you're going to take your green piece of paper and we're actually going to try and tear it. Now, Harris said to me that he's done this before and that he just cuts it with scissors. And I said, no, Harris, I don't want you to cut it with scissors. I want you to try and tear it. Try and tear it. So we're going to try and tear it so it looks like it has a hilly line. Okay, so quite a wavy line, quite a zaggy line. So turn the paper on its side on landscape and have your fingers really close together like you're a crab with pincers and don't just go really fast take your time so keep your fingers close together and think about the direction that you're tearing so I'm going to tear down the way and then I'm going to stop I'm going to get my fingers in close again Harris honey I'm going to tear from here that way it'll make sense in a second okay that's it all the way down to the other side just take your time. So something like that will do. Okay. That's it. Keep going. Good boy. 
Move your hands so you're closer, so take that hand and bring it in further. Good boy. Doing a great job. That's it, all the way down to the other side. Oh yeah. Good boy. Well done. So now you've got two pieces of paper. So you can decide what one do you prefer. Do you prefer this one or this one? And what you're going to do, Harris, is you're going to glue that piece of paper. I know there's a blue gap at the bottom, but that's where your other green piece is going to go to cover that up. Okay? So I would like you to glue, or you can glue that one, one of those pieces of paper like this on your blue bit of paper. So Harris is just going to glue it like that. Now, he's got a little space at the bottom of blue, but he's going to cover that up with his second shade of green. So he's not worrying about that. So can you take your glue and give that a wee stick for mum? Awesome. And while you're doing that, I'll show the boys and girls what I'm doing with this one. So that, I've not got, I've tore mine a bit bigger. So I'm going to stick mine down the bottom there. So I've got the glue. And I'm just going to put some glue around the edges of the paper. I don't really need it in the middle because that's just a bit of a waste of glue. So just around the edges. Good job, Harris. And try and glue that right down in the corner. So it should fit, because it's A4, it should fit perfectly along the bottom. I've never done this with pre-printed paper, but pre-painted paper before, so I'm not sure how it's going to look. I quite like it so far. Okay? Is it sticky, sticky? We'll see if we can line it up perfect. Oh, you've done a super job. No, that's the right way. It's white on the other side, so have it up a little bit, sweetheart. It's okay about that blue bit at the bottom because you've got another piece of green, don't you? It's your darker green. Right, now you could stick that down, but it's going to have a straight edge. So you could stick it down and it would have a straight edge like that. Or, if you want to tear it so it's got more of a shape to it, you could tear it. It's up to you. I'll leave it up to you. You're the artist. You can decide. What I'm going to do, however, is I've got this second piece. And I'm just going to tear it again. I quite like that white fluffy edge that my paper's given me, so I'm just going to tear it again. Okay, and then I'm going to glue that down the bottom. Oh yeah, he's tearing it. He's loving it. Oh, that's nice. Look. Oh, you could do that and that. So you could have that there. And you could have it like that and that. Oh, he's very clever. Look. You could have it like that. Okay, glue one there and then glue that one there. You can have your sheep going down the hill, or you can be rolling the Easter eggs like yesterday. Okay, so I'm just going to glue my second piece now on there. Okay, so again, just glue around the edges. And because it's A4, the pieces of paper that we're using, they fit perfectly on side. So again, corner to corner, and stick that down in place. This is a nice, quick, easy one. But if you had painted the paper, you would have had to paint it that and left it to dry, so it would take you quite a while. So we've got our landscape now, which is looking great so far. Okay. Managed to get it right down the bottom. No, line it up a little bit. I'll hold it for you. I'll hold it for you. Come here, take a look. Corner to corner. And then we'll get this bit. Don't worry about that bit, because if you go like this, da -da, that covers up that mess. Okay? Good boy. Well done. Here you go. Oh, Granny's watching. Granny says, um, good morning. Looking forward to seeing your picture, Harris. Granny will be surprised to see you. Harris is having a great morning today. But that's because after this, we're going to have some lunch. And then what are we going to do after we do this? An adventure. An adventure. Harris likes going for adventures, don't you? So we're going to go for an adventure up the hill. Okay. And a little bit more glue. You've got enough glue on that bit. Right. So, Mr. Harris has done this. Lovely. And mummy has done this. Right, let's get some sheep on our field. Now, because this is a field that goes into the distance, before you make your sheep, boys and girls, I want you to think about the size of your sheep. So the sheep that are closest to you, Harris, will they be the largest sheep in your field or the smallest? Large. The largest. And what about the field at the back what will the sheep look like there small. they'll be small so think about that before you put your sheep down so you don't want to have a massive sheep at the back and then a tiny tiny sheep at the front that might look a little bit odd so think about i posted some photographs of fields last night so think about those photographs how the sheep look big at the front 
and then they get smaller at the back. That's all about perspective. So I've got just a white piece of cheap photocopier paper and we're going to use this to make our fluffy sheep. Now again, retaining it because that gives that nice fluffy edge to it. And if you watched the tear bear lesson, you'll remember that the perfect way to make an oval, which is what you'll need for your sheep shape, your sheep shape, gosh, your sheep shape is you will need to do a rectangle first, okay? So what we're gonna do first of all out of this paper is I'm gonna make my sheep for the front. So I'm gonna tear down. I've already got the torn edge at the top. I'm gonna tear down again. And then I'm gonna tear across. Okay, so I have got a rectangle first. Well, Hannah says already starts. He knows what to do here because he's done it with me before. And then what we're going to do to make this an oval, we're going to get rid of those corners. So we're just going to tear the little corner off diagonally. Okay, so see that's starting to curve around now. So I've got one corner off. You're doing okay. You totally know what you're doing. I knew I could have gone and had a cup of tea while you did this. Okay, so we're going to put that shape. So I've got my perfect oval. So I'm now going to stick that right down at the front. Oh, I love it. Now this will determine, oh sorry, I stole the glue. This will determine what the rest of your sheep are going to look like in your field. So if that's the largest one, the rest of them will have to be smaller. Okay, so now I'm going to make my second rectangle, but this time I'm not going to make it as large. I'm going to make it a little bit smaller. I'm going to make a smaller rectangle. And again, I'm going to take all of the corners off. Yes, Harris is going on an adventure this afternoon. I'm not sure where we're going. He's in charge of the adventure. Um, I don't know. Mom? Yeah? Is this a thin one? Um, I don't know. Take the lid off and see. Are oh, you going to draw your faces on already? Okay. So I've now got a smaller one in the background. And then I'm going to do an even smaller one up on my hill. And you'll notice you'll have lots of little corners that you've torn off and they're just lying on the table because I've saved those because they can actually be your sheep in the background. So don't throw them on the floor or put them in the bin. Okay, so you've got another one there. I'm going to get into that. Okay. I'm going to put this one further up my field. You know, if we were in the classroom right now, we'd be spending a lot of time talking about perspective and how things look in the background and how smaller they get and in real life, how if you walked up to them, they'd be bigger. But obviously we're not in the classroom. I'm going to try and blitz through this. It's getting smaller into the background. And I'm just going to do one more for luck. So this one's going to be half that size again. So you'll notice on my paper I've got like a series of steps coming down. And again, I'm just going to get rid of those corners with my little, little fingernails. Chop, 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 chop. You ones find this easier than me because I've got smaller fingers. I'm going to put that one all the way up there. Now I did my portrait. Of course you can do yours landscape if you want. Going upstairs, you know that thumping. I'm just gonna use up some of those little fluffy bits that I've got lying on the table. Stick that into some of the glue. We're running low on glue speed. Need to get some more. There we go. I've got a tiny, tiny little one up there. Just stick that up there. So I've used up all those little ones I've got left. Now, also, I forgot to say that if you want to do some clouds for your sky, I don't need to because I did a pre painted background. But if you want to use some clouds for your sky, you can tear really, really long, sinuous clouds just by tearing down your paper. And you end up these lovely, lovely long pieces of paper, which you can then put up in your sky. In fact, yeah, let's just do that. I'll double layer it. Oh, lovely, you did some little fluffy lines on yours. Okay, so we can then put those on as well. And don't forget that baba black sheep so if you've got any black paper kicking about in the house you could always make yourself a little black baba black sheep to go on your field as well but just don't forget to tear all those corners and edges off i'm gonna put my black sheep what size is that right that one to go up there then because that's not as big okay we've got our sheep going like this now i've done all my sheep landscape which makes me think that the head's going to be there and the legs are going to be down there. But what I might do is also have a sheep that's facing me. So for my sheep that's facing me, I'm going to actually put my oval shape portrait direction. So it's not going to go landscape, it's going to go up and down the way. So I'm going to have a sheep that's looking 
right ass. Okay. Lovely Harris. We're doing a lovely job, very quiet. Okay, so this time I'm gonna have my shape going that way. Right, next up, you'll probably guess what's gonna happen next, and that'll sort of end everything. Draw any of the features on, so heads, legs, tails, anything else you want to put on yours. Um, if you've got any cotton wool at home, feel free to stick some cotton wool to make these look a little bit more fluffy. We don't really have any, so we're not gonna bother with that. So then you can draw your legs, tail and heads. Obviously, the closer you get, the more detail you'll have in your head. So you'll probably see eyes, you'll see ears, you'll see knobbly knees and hoofs on the legs because you've gotten closer to it. Um, whereas in the background, just bear with me, in the background, there'll just be little dots you'll not really see very much. Okay, so in the background, there'll just be a little dot for the eyes, a little dot for the tail, and probably just some little dots for legs. You probably won't even see them. Can you even see that one in the background? Okay, um, this one, the one that's facing me, its head will be right in the middle. You won't see its tail, because its tail will be at the other side. And its legs will actually come out at either side of it. So this one's head will be there on the front. Um, Harris has done some, oh, I can't wait to show yours, Harris. Harris has done some really, really nice little marks on his wool, actually, to make it look even fluffier. Um, there we go. Right, so we're just about there. And that's only taken 20 minutes, Harris. Yeah, in the classroom, this would normally take me 50 minutes. That's unbelievable. Really, because I'm not blethered as much today. Oh, this one's, I forgot his legs. Okay. So, there we go. Pre-painted. Looks really good, actually. That could be done over two lessons. We could paint the paper one week, leave it to dry, and then do it the next week. So that's actually a great bit of CBD for me. I think I'll do that next time. So we've got this one. Just got the one I did last night, just with plain paper. And then I'll show you Harris's in a few minutes' time. Once he's finished, he's still drawn all his faces on, so I'm just going to leave him because he's really, really happy. So thank you very, very much for joining in. I'm sorry it was fast and furious, but I'm just a bit anxious that Mirren wanders in at any point and meets up at the table and scours everything. Um, cannot wait to see the pictures at the end. Not quite sure what we're going to do next week. Next week, schools will be back, so I'm expecting numbers will be up again. Numbers have been quite down over the holidays. Um, so next week, I'm not quite sure what we'll do next week. Harris, what would you like to do next week for your art lesson? Hmm. Don't know. Something simple. We'll do something simple next week. So, if there's anything you would like to do and any help you need with anything, just give me a wee message, and we'll try my best to try and do something fun. And t oh, not tomorrow, Thursday. If you've got any big brothers or sisters, there's going to be a primary. Now, I've put down as primary four to seven art lesson, um, but to be honest, I've done it with primary three before. So, if you're littler, you probably would manage it okay. It's a paper craft lesson. So you'll need some paper for that. You need some yellow, blue, and green paper, and some glue, preferably quite strong glue, because it's a 3D craft that we're doing, so it needs to have a bit of strength to it to hold it in place, and some scissors as well. So it's another simple one. So that'll be on Thursday at, I think, 10 o'clock. Harris, your job on Thursday is going to be to look after your sister. And Alex will be here. So yeah, so thank you very, very much for watching. I will go away and post this now and I will stick the pictures of the, sorry, the photos of the finished article. And we're gonna go and get tidied up now and go and get ready for our adventure. See you all soon, take care. Have a lovely Tuesday and see you on Thursday, if not before or if not after. Bye everyone, Harris, you wanna say bye-bye? Harris, you wanna say bye-bye? <laughs> I'll do, I'll do.